In this video, I'm going to be talking about a BMW E90 320i that presented in the workshop. This one had run-in issues, it had poor idle and hesitation under acceleration. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through the simple steps I used to find and fix this fault. So the first thing I'm going to do is show a couple of clips of the fault when it first presented. So I'm going to show you the vehicle when it was at idle in the workshop and then the initial test drive on how I found it under load. So it's got that hesitation, especially at the lower rev range when you are accelerating. So it's hesitating on uh, acceleration from a standstill and you can kind of overcome that as you get up the rev range then, but that was actually very bad there, even at higher rev range. Typically it's lower rev range. It has uh, an issue with higher rev range as seen there. I'm glad I kept test driving this because seems to be getting worse uh, but it's a performance issue uh, issue confirmed customer complaint confirmed and now it's back to the workshop to uh, analyze some more of the live data and possibly scope it so now that I've confirmed the fault I'm back in the workshop and I'm doing my tests the first test I'm going to do is get the scan tool and scan to see what fault codes are present there's multiple faults that's actually present on this vehicle and the fault codes that are present is P0300, multiple random misfires detected, P0301, cylinder one misfire detected, and P0134, which is O2 sensor activity not detected, and that was bank one, sensor one. So there were the fault codes that were stored, and there's a few directions we can go to help pinpoint what those faults are. Now, with uh, any faults, there's different ways you can go. There's no right way or wrong way, but on different flows or different engine styles, I will go different ways. So on this one, I went straight for that misfire. So I wanted to see what was going on. The ignition coils are very accessible, which means I don't have any manifolds in the way, I don't have any restriction, and I can get a clear um, view if, if there's a misfire happening on those coils or plugs. To give you an idea of the different ways you can check a misfire, you can use a spark tester, a very straightforward, simple tool. I've used them most of my career, just checking the strength of the spark plug. You can plug it directly into the coil and you can view what's happening there. Another way, which is a bit more advanced way and more of um, expense to have these type of equipment is a paddle probe. So you're able to put it directly on that coil over plug design and you're able to get a waveform from that and you're able to see what's happening. So you're able to look at the burn time, you're able to look at the um, firing of the spark plug and you're able to see the oscillation of the coil afterwards. So you're getting a good picture as to what's happening in that cylinder by just putting the paddle probe on top of the coil. I use that all of the time and it's one of the most effective ways to quickly diagnose faults. And to give you an idea of what the capture of a paddle probe looked like, so I'm gonna demonstrate here. And you can see in these waveforms, I'm gonna give you an example of a good one, which is showing the negative polarity peak first, then you're getting the spark plug firing voltage, which is in kV. Then you're gonna be seeing the burn time, so you can see how, how much burn time is in there. And then lastly, at the very end, that wiggle is a coil oscillation period. So we're getting a good screen capture of a good um, ignition coil firing, so that's secondary ignition. On a bad one, you can see here where the waveform looks very different. So we know straight away there's a fault in there. And using this method is extremely useful for restricted coils. When you have a manifold, brackets, wiring looms, all of that stuff in the way which makes it difficult to remove uh, components, you can get the paddle probe in there and you can get a capture without any uh, removal of items whatsoever. On this particular vehicle, I actually went straight for the swap test. 
The swap test is one of the most useful and beneficial and simple ways you can ever diagnose the likes of these faults. You have a random misfire detected. It's present all of the time. It's giving you that cylinder recognition so you know what cylinder is causing the fault as well. And you can do a swap one to another. So we have P0301, cylinder one. We can swap that coil to cylinder two. We can even go spark plug from one to three. And then if we know if it jumps from two to three, it's either a spark plug or an ignition coil. That's exactly what was done. And we found out that the ignition coil had failed. So then it was, that's one problem that we have um, confirmed that needs to be sorted out. It was actually plugs and coils that was given the clearance for that. And then we have the next fault code that we can zoom in on and focus what's going on there. So O2 sensor circuit, no activity. Bank one, sensor one. There's four O2 sensors in this. Um, one upstream, one downstream, and having a look at the live data and seeing when everything is heated up, what is the activity of these O2 sensors. As you can see in this image here, there is a fault in that sensor because it's not doing anything. It's stuck on 1.49, which basically means it's dead. That's the default setting on those when they are uh, completely out and we know that we have a fault. We know that straight away, just looking at that live data capture, it's not moving, it's not flicking, and we can start to zoom in and try to find out what that is. Now, there's many ways, again, to test uh, oxygen sensors, but I thought this one was a good example of different ways that you can approach it. And what I found when I looked at the oxygen sensor was the wiring harnesses were identical. So those connectors that go one to another were the same. And what I wanna confirm is if we have a wiring issue, if there's a fault along there, if I swap one connector to another, I'm gonna be able to see if that switches. So if we have an oxygen sensor that is dead, but all of the wiring is intact. If I swap the wiring harness from one to another and the fault uh, switches, straight away we know we have good wiring, harness is all good, everything is being captured by the live data, we have an oxygen sensor fault. So that's exactly what was done. Okay, so this is the bank one oxygen sensor here. This is the one that's uh, gonna be disconnected and swapped over to this one here. I'm gonna piggyback off the wires by doing a simple swap test, which will um, check the integrity of the wiring. We'll clear the fault codes and relook at the live data then, and you'll be able to see if it's functioning and the wiring is okay, or it stays the same. So the connectors are the same, that has been verified. And as you'll see on the screen, there's going to be a difference. So swapping this, this is a six wire oxygen sensor, as is this one here. So these are both uh, upstream ones. So this is bank one, which flows all the way up there and wraps around and disconnecting this, which is the wiring and plugging that in over here directly into that one. We'll verify whether the wiring is good. If the wiring is good and we still have dead voltage uh, on that sensor when reverted back, we have confirmed that the oxygen sensor needs replacing then. Yeah, so swapping it has brought it back to life on that one. So that's confirmed wiring, yeah. simple as that. Happy days, oxygen sensor it is. And as you can see in that clip, the oxygen sensor does need replacing. Uh, it managed to change over. We got it active again, got the voltage moving up and down. So that is confirmed failure. That oxygen sensor is now ordered, um, will get installed when that part comes in. And then afterwards, it'll be rechecking to make sure that it's now become active and that uh, present and current fault code that keeps coming back uh, instantly will now disappear. So after this uh, is installed, we'll bring it for a road test again, monitor the live data and make sure that performance has returned. So after that, it was installed, the new part, put it all back together and it was time to bring it for a road test.
So I'm just driving this on the final road test now. Uh, engine light has stayed off, no fault codes coming back, and complete performance has returned. We have no erratic idle, we have no massive lack in uh, acceleration, and as this vehicle heats up, the um, major misfires that were happening and sluggishness in performance have now gone. And that was it, another success. We did have multiple faults on this one. Ignition coil failure, spark plugs were old, they were replaced as well. And then an oxygen sensor was replaced and all performance was returned. The vehicle was running absolutely great, lights were off and we had an extremely happy customer afterwards. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.